people from the Indian background would know much about this. I am not going into the historical aspects of this person, but there was a king. Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, you know, Shivaji, who was a great king or an emperor, who, who's, uh, you know, kind of acquired a tremendous amount of respect for his administration, for his bravery, for his courage and his strategy of how he fought in those times, hugely respected, especially people from Maharashtra. So Shivaji is relevant even today because of the way he conducted his administration. Very evolved, enlightened administration he did. Very little people know about his administration. Generally they know only about his battle strategies which are admired and appreciated. But the most important thing was his administration. Very evolved administration he did for his kingdom. So he had a guru whose name was Ramdas. One day Shivaji was standing in the balcony of his palace. Then he saw his guru going from house to house with a begging bowl, begging. Then he thought, what is my guru doing begging on the streets? I'm a king, my guru can't be begging on the street, he must be. Then uh, he called Balaji who was his assistant, wrote a chit and sent it, please go and place it at the guru's feet. So he went and placed this chit at the guru's feet. So he picked it up and saw, and uh, Ramda smiled. And next day, he came to the palace and he said, uh, in this chit, Shivaji had written, I am placing my entire kingdom at your feet. You can do whatever you want with the kingdom and me. So, Ramda said, uh, now that you have forsaken your kingdom, and given it to me. What are you planning to do? So Shivaji said, Sadhguruji, whatever you say, you are my Sadhguru, whatever you say, I will do. And I just want to be around you and serve you, that's all I want to do. Then uh, he had uh, Ramdas had an extra begging bowl. So take this. And both of them went begging on the street, the emperor and the guru. People, when the guru came to their house, they thought he's just some beggar and they gave whatever they gave. Now the emperor has come with great respect, they gave whatever they could. It's only now that if a beggar comes home, people are putting cooked food, leftover food, all kinds of things. But in this culture that was never done in the past, they only gave ingredients, rice, dal, you know, like this. So it's for them to go and cook their food and eat. So after their begging rounds were over, they went near the river and the guru prepared a small meal a simple meal of the whatever ingredients had come that day. And after he finished eating what was left over, the king, the Shivaji, no more a king, ate. Then they were sitting under a tree and Shivaji smiled and said, now that you turn me into a beggar in just twenty-four hours, what else do you wish to do with me? So Ramda said, it's called gero, that means a piece of orange cloth. He gave this orange cloth which was on his body, he took it and gave this orange cloth 
and he said, use this as your banner and go back and rule the country. But just know, this is not your kingdom. If you know this doesn't belong to you, you don't own it and you will do the best that you can for the people, that is the way you must rule. So Shivaji always used the orange cloth or the orange flag as his banner and he administered his kingdom in a most enlightened way possible to run a kingdom. Why I'm telling you this story is, Shivaji rose in his stature, lives in the hearts and minds of this country because he lived in grace. He fought battles, many, but absolutely balanced, never in anger, never in hatred, never lost in anything, just doing what is needed. Grace is the greatest empowerment that you can have. Once grace enters your life, every little thing is, how do I become available to grace? Grace does not mean it's coming from one direction somewhere. As gravity is, grace is, but in a much bigger dimension, because gravity works only to a certain distance. Grace is the basis of the creation. But you won't be available to it if you have strong walls of indi individuality. If you become dispassionate, slowly the walls will dissolve. Now, it breeds grace. Everything in you breeds grace. 